we're going to go ahead and get started here. So, obviously you guys are here for that knee and hip pain. If you've done a workshop with us before, you'll know that we have some general rules for the day. So, the first rule is have fun. We like to have fun. Oops, went too far there, guys. But you, we like to have fun. Uh, you'll see me and Jeff having a good time, and we really want you guys to have a good time as well. Um, part of that having fun, I always like to start here with a nice little cartoon. Uh, I heard a pop in my knee. Uh, a nice little balloon animal there. Um, the second rule for today is give 110%. So we're here to give 110% to you guys. Uh, and we hope in return that you guys give 110% to us. So that means type in the chat, say hi, interact with us, ask questions. Like we really want tonight to be as beneficial for you as possible. So jump in the chat, say hi, you know, whatever you want, uh, ask the questions, but definitely interact with us. And that's rule number three. So be interactive get in there. Um, we really want to try and make this as, as helpful as possible. And then rule number four is take action. So at the end of this, we put these on because we like to help people. I mean, that's kind of why we got into this profession, I guess, you know, helping people. Yes, uh, exactly. The greater good. <laughs> um, so take action. So we want you to feel better. And the best way you can do that is by doing something. So you can either book a discovery call. So it's a free 15 minute call with one of the practitioners at the clinic. Um, or also just for showing up today, we're going to send everyone um, a handout on bracing for the knee um, and then also an info sheet on one of the therapies we're going to talk about today. So everyone's going to get that. We're going to send that out to you guys. But to get us started, I want you guys to make sure you know who's talking at you for the next hour. So I'm Sarah DeVore. I'm a physiotherapist at Physio Plus Health Group. I've been there for, gosh, I think over four years now. Um, I work with a lot of patients, hip and knee, uh, post-op. I work with these, this population, whether it's, you know, hip replacements, ACL surgery, um, all those kinds of stuff. Uh, and then also people pre-surgery, just injuries, uh, hips and knees are really common. We see a ton of them. Um, so it's definitely something that's a, a large piece of my caseload. Um, and then the other panelist that I'm honored to have here with me is, is Jeff. Do you want to introduce yourself? Yeah, thanks, Sarah. My name is Jeff Belgue. Uh, I'm a chiropractor at Physio Plus Health Group. I've been here for two years now and uh, in practice for about seven. So certainly have seen uh, plenty of hips, plenty of knees. I mean, knee osteoarthritis is probably as common as we, we get in the clinic. And of course, being a chiropractor, also my fair share of, you know, spine related problems, spine, spine arthritis degenerative disc and joint disease. So I think between the two of us, we should be able to uh, answer a few questions tonight and uh, lend a helping hand. For sure. I always love when I get to do workshops with you, Jeff, because we, we're very similar. People all the time will ask like, oh, well, it's Cairo versus Physio. And I always say like, between me and Jeff, like there's more that makes us similar than different, but at the same yeah. time, we like look at problems slightly differently and we, you know, think about things a little differently. So we get kind of two takes on the same problem. So always love when we get to work together. As do I. So spin the wheel just for showing up today. We are, uh, I'll say, I'll say auctioning off or like spinning off, whatever the spin the wheel is. We are spinning off <laughs> um, a free assessment. So the key is just for showing up today, your name will be put in a draw. Unfortunately, we're having some technical difficulties with the spinning the wheel. So we're going to take everyone's name down. And if you win, we're going to email you. So if you've been here before, you know, usually we end in a very Vanna White dramatic spin of the wheel. Unfortunately, that extra punch of fun at the end will not be there today. Uh, but don't worry, we are still doing, doing the giveaway. We're just going to do that uh, when we kind of sort out the site and figure out what's going on there, okay? And did you say, Sarah, we'll obviously contact the individual who, uh, who we will eventually spin the wheel. You'll have to trust us. We'll keep each other honest and we'll, we'll uh, pick the winner and, and the clinic will reach out. Yeah, for sure. We'll, we'll contact you. However, we'll, we'll hunt you down. We will hunt you down. Uh, so I want to get that interaction going. If you had no joint pain today, what would you be doing? I want you guys to type in the chat. Uh, you know, what is it holding you back from the knees, the hips? What do they kind of stop you, stop you from doing? It's a little ironic that we're having like a hip pain workshop today because this morning, like I biked and we're like, oh, my hip feels off on the bike. But now tonight I'm like, oh, that's tender. Like feeling a little hip pain. It's like sympathy pain here. 
Anyone type in the chat? Make sure it says to uh, to everyone. Want to put that in? Let us know. Let us know. Kind of sounds like let it snow. Let it snow, and that's not what I want to go with there. Oh, Marie I raised her hand. Are you guys not able to type in the chat? Maria, is, I'm going to let you talk here. Hi, Marie. Saw you raise your hand. Are you guys unable to type in the chat? You may have to unmute Marie as well if you're in control there, Sarah. Oh. No. Oh, oh, no. Oh, no, there we Barb go. Is in the chat. Great. Perfect. So maybe Uh, a long, a big walk. That's, that's always good. And one thing to remember, you know, pain doesn't always equal harm. So if you can go for a long walk and we're a little tender, we're, we're going to teach you some strategies to help manage that day to day, but then also importantly, strategies to, you know, prevent the tenderness in the first place. I, um, I recently had a patient with like kind of this transition time a year with, with knee arthritis and, and she brought up skiing. So like, that's kind of like downhill skiing. That's her big goal of, you know, building some strength and managing symptoms. Um, so that'll be fun to work with. Yeah, no, it's, uh, it's part, I mean, a little pin in it, right? We're going to talk about that later. We're talking about exercise and, and that fine line a little bit for sure and managing that discomfort. See some other things here, big walk, big walk. Yeah, that activity, just living life, like really here, stationary bike, you know, walking over apple crisp, everyone loves very seasonal dessert, love it. Um, but it really is just that day-to-day that -day function, right? That we're, that we're kind of losing. So the three biggest causes of hip and knee pain. These are what we kind of see clinically, the three biggest things. The first one being osteoarthritis. I'm sure this is one away, arthritis. You know, people hear about this one a lot. You can see here on the screen, we have that healthy knee and then a load of degeneration in that healthy knee. We have that healthy hip, a little bit of degeneration in that healthy hip. Um, this is a normal part of aging. We see various risk factors that can contribute to this, such as, you know, if you have a high BMI or you're overweight. Um, if you have a history of injury to these joints, then we see a higher incidence of osteoarthritic changes. So say like years ago, you had an ACL reconstruction, then you'll see a little bit more arthritis in the knee. Um, there's some family history stuff there as well. Uh, there's a lot of factors, but there's actually a lot of factors that we don't know. And I find this always um, interesting is that your x-ray can look horrible and it doesn't really always correlate to the amount of discomfort you're in, which is one of the interesting, I was saying, cool things is people will come in and they can have like tons of pain and then it's like barely any changes on their x-ray or they'll have, you know, no pain or minimal pain and they have like horrible changes on their x-ray. It's like, oh, it's the worst knee I've ever seen. And they're like, oh, she can head. Um, so, so definitely doesn't really, doesn't really correlate, which is always an interesting thing that we, that we see in clinic. Um, but yeah, osteoarthritis just is that cartilage in the knee and it's, it's wearing down and, and really it's looking a little bit, a little bit different these days. So we kind of associate our osteoarthritis with like, oh, that's something my grandma had, right? Like it's like this aging disease, but we actually are seeing it earlier and earlier. So 40s and 50s, we got this younger patient. They want to stay active. They're already being active. And their hope is to kind of delay that surgery a little bit and kind of pre prevent things from getting worse. So when we see that typical arthritis patient in the clinic now, this isn't like your grandma's arthritis anymore. It is getting a lot younger and a lot cooler. And I was like cooler because like, there's so much more we can do. <laughs> it's not just like, oh, you got it. And, and then, okay, you're off for a knee replacement. Um, it's, it's a little bit more um, diverse. We can work with these people. We can delay surgery for years and years through bracing, through exercise. Um, and even the surgery, Jeff, I know like I was chatting with you about this recently, how like, how long did you say you read about like now they're making the like or thought the actual like implant like 20 years to the last? Yeah, I, I had a patient come back from a surgeon recently who was saying that like gone are like the the idea that like shelf life for replacements is 10 years and you can easily push push 20 now. So not to say we want people to rush into surgery, but for a select, not everyone with osteoarthritis, but for a select population, you know, surgery may eventually be your best answer but the good news is if that does happen 
there's a great quality of life afterwards. And just to add to, um, Sarah's been talking about the younger, the 40s, the 50 year olds, where there's you know so much more time, so much more that you can do. But as an aside to age as well, the research is now telling us that even our older than you know people in their 60s, their 70s, there's there's so much great evidence coming out now that like, and we'll get into it a bit, but like education, specific exercise, learning how to manage your activities of daily living, like there's there's lots of good quality evidence that shows us that you can improve kind of your day-to-day -day life, you know, regardless of your age, if you have a way. For sure, for sure. There's so much, like I said, it's it's, it's more fun for a therapist because, um, you know, I all the time I've been working, I've been working too long, but like this is really one of those things where you look at over the past 20 years, how far medicine has come on this topic alone. And it's a really interesting thing before it'd be like, oh, someone had a hip replacement, like don't stand for six weeks. Now it's like day one, you're walking, right? Like there's been so much, you know, progression in, in the world with regards to this. So a lot of those old stigmas and stereotypes and things you think of, of like, this is what osteoarthritis looks like. A lot of that's just, just not true anymore. And that's what makes it even more fun for, for people like me and Jeff to deal with because there's so much that we can do. Um, so if you think this is you or you know this is you, I know uh, we looked at all those pre questions that people put in. A lot of people talked about having arthritis related pain. So if you have this in your knee or in your hip, if you have arthritis, just type in the chat if this sounds like it's you um, kind of dealing with this you know, degeneration of the knee. So the second area that we see a lot of discomfort coming from are what we call muscle imbalances. So I have this nice example here of someone sitting and you can see they're sitting in two different positions. And what you'll see is those arrows are where our kind of muscles are pulling on our hip and how we sit. So you can see they're in very different positions based on that sitting position. So I always like to bring this up to people because we sit all day and our hip flexors, that's the muscle right in the front of our hip. It gets so tight because it's sitting in a shortened position, right? Like it's kind of sitting curled up all day, curled up, curled up, curled up. I don't know if you guys have ever like, you know, laid on the couch for a while and then all of a sudden you went to get up and you're like, oh, uh, 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 and like, it's hard to stretch it out again because you've been sitting in a short and tight position. And that happens a lot with our hips. So we sit and we get tight in the front of our hips and then some of the muscles at the back get extra stretched and they don't work as well. And we get this imbalance and that imbalance between our muscles starts to kind of take the, the hip joint or the knee joint and have it sit not in a great position. So the same idea, you know, really the knee is impacted by the hip, but the same idea in the knee, if we're sitting with the knee in certain positions, if we're, you know, getting tight in our hips because the hips impact the knees, if we're not strong in the right muscles or one muscle is pulling really hard and one muscle is not pulling quite so hard, we can change how that actual joint sits and functions. And that can lead to a lot of discomfort. I don't know if anyone's ever heard the, the word like impingement or some of that pinching, um, sometimes that pinching in the hip can come from these muscular imbalances. This is the type of person, you know, where you see like you're sitting all day um, and you start to notice that the hips are tight. If you go to the gym and maybe you go to do leg day, but your hip muscles don't actually feel like they're working a ton. You don't actually feel sore the next day in your butt muscles. It's because you're sitting on them all day and they're kind of turning off. Uh, muscle imbalances. This is one that I want to stress all ages. I have treated a nine-year-old dancer who just, you know, had a little bit of a growth spur, you know, some of the muscles didn't quite balance around the hip, hip pain. I have had people in their 80s who, you know, are raking or doing a ton of gardening. And all of a sudden they're like, oh, I'm really sore. And it's like, oh yeah, like you're, you're sitting a lot, you're sitting all winter. And then you got up to do all this activity and your muscles aren't quite balanced and your hip is sore. So this is really one of those things that can impact any age. And I would argue, and I mean, Jeff, you can, you can disagree, but that imbalance in muscles almost becomes a piece of every condition. It's just, is that the sole driver or is that kind of like a side piece? Totally. Yeah. Completely agree. Yeah. For, for everything, the balance, it's not just being strong, but being strong in a balanced position. Great question, Barb. What position on this chart is correct? A or B? Uh, neither. So both of them are showing the extreme. What you would want is something kind of in the middle. So both of those are showing like the one on the left is like all the way arched forward. The one on the right is like all the way arched back. Um, both of those aren't right. Somewhere in the middle is actually what would be right. So that's actually showing the two kind of extremes of we don't want to be here. We don't want to be there. You want to kind of find that nice spot in the middle. That's a great question, Barb. Thank you.
So if you think this is you, I want you to type imbalances. If you think, hey, that sounds like me, you know, that those tight hips from sitting in the front, then I have to try trouble standing up straight, or you try to work your glutes, doesn't matter how hard you work, those glutes just don't turn on, you don't get that soreness in the bum muscles. If you think this is you, just type imbalance in the chat. Nice. See a couple of people typing here, imbalance, imbalance. Yeah, it's common. It's common. It's like this Western. It's probably all of us, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we can just, I just type my name. Sarah, yeah, that's me, imbalance. Um, you know, going to have a little after sitting today. Uh, but as a Western society, we spend so much time, like, sitting, right? Like, me and Jeff are very fortunate to have jobs where we're on our feet all day. Um, but it really is just like, even on weekends, like, you know, I watch a little football on Sundays. All of a sudden I'm like, Ooh, has it really been four hours since I, you know, moved around? Uh, it happens. It happens way too easily. So the last kind of main cause that we see, um, in this, this one, again, I guess that, you know, it does bleed into other, other areas, but sometimes this can actually be that main cause is poor form. So when we say form, that's a very exercise based word, but really we're looking at how you move okay so how your joints what position they're in you can kind of see on that right that clear example of where are my knees in relation to my toes how much am i moving poor form comes in i mean muscle imbalances it can lead to poor form um osteoarthritis so when you have degeneration in the knee or the hip i would like to say that your your joint space so on an x-ray we should see a nice black joint space as we get away that kind of decreases I like to describe that, that just as we age, whether you are diagnosed with arthritis or not, as you age, your, your wiggle room for improper movement generally decreases. So I like to give the example of like, you know, everyone's kind of, you know, seeing their like four-year-old kid or seeing their maybe grandson or like, they're like sleeping like that, like that. And then they just wake up in the morning and they walk, like, they're like, it's fine. The like W sit position, the teenagers are like in a ball hunched over just for hours and they just stand up out of it. And you're like, wow, if I sat like that, even I say I'm young. And even if I sat like that for like an hour, if I sat like that for 15 minutes, I'd probably be like, yo, somebody has to help me off, off the floor here. Um, our wiggle room within our joints for not moving well or not being in the right position, it goes down as we age. So a lot of times we'll look at something about like how somebody does a certain movement or does a certain exercise. And they're like, well, that's just always how I've done it. And it wasn't a problem 10 years ago, but it becomes a problem now. So again, this can be caused by muscle imbalances. This is one of those things that we really want to look at when we look at, you know, arthritis, because we're looking at that joint space is narrowing. Our wiggle room for improper movement just goes down. It's not that we can't move pain-free. It's just that we have to be mindful about how we're moving as we can't move like we did when we were seven years old and our body was made of noodles right? It's just a little different. But this is something that definitely, if you think this is you, um, oh, one more point here. So you can also see when we look at that uh, kind of poor form, I always like to show this, especially when we talk about knees and hips, they're so interconnected. We threw them together in this workshop because you can't take one out of the other one. So when we look at poor form, it's the positioning of our knees, but also that impacts the positioning of our hip, right? So if I go back a photo, I go back. Ooh, ooh, there we go. But go back, right? You look at just lifting and you look at the squat, and it doesn't directly see picture to picture this huge change in the hip. But you can see the knees are in a very different position. And here you can see how that knee being a different position, you can kind of see what ends up happening up at the hip and at the feet as well. So it's the whole kind of lower extremity, it's everything about how we move. And we just need to be mindful that the you know worse we move, the more likelihood that that movement is going to be painful. But again, yeah, so type form, this sounds like it's you. This one kind of feels like it's a piece of a lot of people, right? Well, whatever their diagnosis, Wendy form. Yeah, so this is an, a, yeah, sorry, I, was just say, I was just gonna say, this is an interesting one too, because like form is, or movement quality is a lifelong battle, you know? Like it's kind of, it's, it's very similar to like posture. That's just static form is, you know, there's no magical fix. It's, it's mindfulness, it's practice. And like, you could be really good for a day and then you could go, you know, empty your dishwasher, like that far picture on the left and, you know, twinge your back a bit. So it's, you gotta, you gotta earn this one. You gotta learn how to move and then keep, 
keep on top of it. And that's how we stay well. For sure. It's a habit. It's just, it's like mm-hmm. the classic, like practice makes perfect. All right. So big question, exercise. This is a huge one I get all the time. Like, oh, like I need to be stronger, but exercise hurts. Or how can this make me better when the consistent thing that hurts me is exercise, right? This is this is a big question we get. Um, and I always like to kind of say to people, it's about finding the right exercise, right? So if you, again, it comes down to the form a little bit as well, right? It comes down to the muscle imbalances, right? So we're going to pick an exercise as, you know, a huge piece of what we do. We're going to pick an exercise. If we see you have muscle imbalances around the hip, we're going to really specifically pick an exercise that's going to strengthen the weak muscle while letting the strong muscle or tight muscle rest, right? If, you know, you have poor form doing a squat, well, we're probably not going to have you do 200 squats because that's probably going to hurt and feel quite uncomfortable. Really, when it comes down to picking exercise, and is exercise the solution or the problem? Uh, there's this old thought, and, and you know, back in the day, there was a uh, the thought was that running caused knee arthritis. Um, it's still held by a lot of you know people who you know, kind of like this, oh, well, it's because you run and you're a runner and you cause knee OA. Um, and it came from this idea that people would run, their knees would hurt, they'd go to the doctor, and the doctor say, oh yeah, your X-ray shows you have knee OA that's running caused that running caused you to hurt and therefore running caused you to have knee OA. and this this thought was held for a long time and then they actually did some retroactive studies and when you look at it if you run you actually have a lower likelihood of getting osteoarthritis because if you are a lifelong runner generally all the other factors that means you're healthy and active that means you generally have a lower body mass index that means that you again, you know, engage in healthy behaviors. Like you see lower rates of smoking in people who are runners, right? All of those other good quality characteristics that come from being a runner way outweigh any potential loading on your knees that can come from running, right? So there's not this blanket, this is a good exercise and this is a bad exercise or exercise is bad or all exercise is good. It really is so nuanced to the patient in front of us, like having individualized exercise programs is one of like, you know, the most important things, like having the right exercise for that condition. Uh, just quickly in the chat, um, Michael was asking about, uh, about weights and similar to Sarah's explanation about running is, is resistance training is excellent an excellent way to build strength and and help manage arthritis and and again even prevent arthritis because you're moving your body through quality quality movements i guess so the big big word there is quality so weight training well in you know a somewhat decent form is is really good for you as also and that's the biggest thing right we get people who come in a lot and they're discouraged because they try to exercise and the exercise cause pain And it comes down to, hey, we have a form issue, we have a muscle imbalance issue, we have these things that we need to address. And then it's just picking the right exercise and really approaching it the right way that, you know, is not only backed by being experts, but the research and and what we know is out there for that condition, right? We know that if you come in and you have super tight hip flexors, just stretching your hip flexors all day doesn't actually get you in a better place. But if you strengthen the hip flexors and you strengthen the glutes, we know that you actually will get less tight in your hip flexors. And, you know, there's so many, so much knowledge out there. And it's, it's really just making sure that you're doing the right exercise for the condition you have, whether you're the arthritis bucket, whether you're the imbalance bucket in that form bucket or across the all three. Uh, it really is exercise is the answer. It is always the answer. Uh, moving is the answer, but it's, working the right muscles and doing like really just good form that therapist guided that making sure you're moving right good form so that kind of leads us into our next piece when we talk about exercise and what is that kind of right exercise for certain conditions um and this is a huge treatment uh that is really popping up everywhere i'm sure a bunch of you have heard of it uh and jeff is going to chat a little bit about it 
Yeah, so thanks, Sarah. So the GLAD program is this new education and exercise based program for those um, with hip and knee osteoarthritis or those who are sort of on the cusp who deal with kind of like daily stiff and painful knees or hips. Um, it's no secret osteoarthritis is, you know, a, a leading cause of disability like worldwide. And that's sort of what pushed this this group from this research based group from Denmark to, you know, scour the literature, literature, reach out to uh, researchers, to clinicians and collect this kind of super team across the globe to build this program that, um, you know, again, can help people around the world. And so what it looks like is it's, it's a seven week program. Uh, it's run twice a week. Uh, two sessions are completely education based, like almost lecture style, followed by question and answer where uh, participants get to learn about exactly what osteoarthritis is, uh, risk factors, symptoms you're either experiencing or may experience later, uh, the evidence-based treatments for osteoarthritis, how to manage your symptoms day to day, and specifically, like, like we've talked about a little bit, what types of exercises are best for you? And then we take all that education and knowledge and then push that into six weeks of exercise sessions where you do it in a small group with a certified therapist. So not only are you learning this you know, researched, well-designed program for people with arthritis, you're also getting this, you know, very small group trained professional eyes on you because like we mentioned, it's about the quality of the exercise, the quality of your movement. And if Sarah just flips back one slide, the, the program's been around for a few years now, but it's kind of becoming more and more popular, but they've had enough time to, to you know, track participants and collect results. And there's statistically significant findings in participants reporting less pain, the reduced use for painkillers, and I think anti-inflammatories as well. Obviously, this one's probably not a shocker. It's, it helps people lead more physically active lives. Um, and uh, again, the, the big takeaway is that you're, you're sort of across seven weeks, learning how to manage yourself for years. You get a load of education, you learn an exercise program and you learn how to do that exercise program well. And, you know, you invest in these seven weeks and then that turns into, you know, all this opportunity to continue to work things, work at things on your own. Um, so, I mean, the reason why we're putting this into tonight's presentation is because at the clinic, we're, we're launching, uh, we're running the GLAD program ourselves. We're, we're launching it actually next week. Um, so it runs from November 1st to de December 16th. And um, it is held to small numbers. We, we don't exceed six to eight participants, but um, there is room for uh, a couple more at least. So if anybody is interesting, interested or is going to go do a bit more reading and has a few questions, you're welcome to set up one of those discovery phone calls. I'm happy to discuss the program more in depth or answer specific questions, um, especially if, we if anybody wants to quickly get into the program for this running. But it, it's something that as we get it off the ground, the clinic is going to run you know maybe like quarterly or, or a few times through the year so it's something that because it's such a wonderful program and we know it helps people we're going to start sort of offering um to people uh throughout the calendar year yeah if you want more information about this this piece specifically i want you guys to type uh, type glad into the chat and jeff will reach out to you i uh, i always kind of joke about this um in the world of, of rehab, uh, everyone always likes to think they have the right way. And it's really funny because you'll see across the world, like in Australia, they're like, this is the best way to rehab an ACL. And it's like, no, this is the best way to rehab. But the craziest thing about the GLAD program is that it really is like the world, every country is like, yeah, no, we'll do what Denmark did because it really works. Like it's one of those things where it's impressive how like taken up it is by so many people in the world. It is. Uh, such an amazing and as you can see here on the side too it's eligible for your insurance benefits like hey guys it's the end of the year like that stuff 
you don't get to use it or lose it, you know? Um, but it's an absolutely amazing program. Like I just, somebody just chatted. Um, I, this is like perfect. Uh, Lynn, I'm going to read what you said. I attended the GLAD program three years ago for knee OA and it was wonderful. Um, and marked improvements, continue those exercises on a regular basis. Like it really is one of those things, like you said, it's, it's not just the intensive, but that they're training, like Jeff said, he's going to train you for something that's going to be forever, right? These exercises are going to carry you forward for years and years and hopefully delay any uh, potential replacement as long as possible. And it's for knees and hips. So yeah, thanks for, uh, thanks for chatting about that, Jeff. My pleasure. Uh, so this is a big question that we are, you know, get a lot is I am in pain. So already come up. Like I did a lot today. I did too much. I'm in pain. I'm in pain. I'm in pain. And how do I feel better? Like, I, you know, you're, you're living your life. You're trying to do exercise. You're trying to stay active. Um, and you want to really know how to kind of tackle that pain. Um, and this is the question we get a lot. Ooh, went too far. There we go. This is the question we get a lot. Ice versus heat. You know, when do you use which one? So let's go into like the buckets of kind of three causes we had. So the first one is um, osteoarthritis. So osteoarthritis by nature is not an inflammatory condition. So there's not actually an active inflammation there. I always say if you just did something, you're like literally walking in the door, coming off of a big walk, then you would maybe consider ice for those first 20 minutes. But otherwise, heat. Really, there's no inflammation. Those knees are achy at the end of the day. Heat them. It's going to bring some blood flow to the area. It has oxygen. It has nutrients. Um, the heat itself has what we call an analgesic effect. So it just decreases the pain that you perceive. And it feels good. We're getting to the cold time of year, folks. You know, it's going to be so nice. Just put a nice little heating pad on your hip or your knee at the end of the day. Um, so really, arthritis heat is the big, the big winner. Uh, the second one, imbalances. If you are having pain at rest, so you're in a lot of discomfort, it's not with movement, you have pain at rest, that's really where you're going to go to that ice kind of category um, versus like the heat would be you have no pain at rest, but the muscle just feels tight or angry. Uh, then you want to try try the heat. And for form, really, that's kind of a toss up. There's not, there's not one thing to do. Um, and if there's nothing else you take away from this slide, listen to your body. If you put one on and it doesn't feel good, do the other one. You know, it, we can say these rules, um, but it's nice because it's like, you know, we'll say like low risk, high reward. If you're like, ooh, like, you know, the ice kind of helped, but then as soon as I took the ice off, it just thaws and I'm in pain again. Well, then try the heat. And if you're putting the heat on and you're like, oh, the heat, like, oh, is it making it more sore? I don't know. Well, then take the heat off and put on some ice. Um, you know, there's, there's these general rules. We have these categories of when you might choose one or the other, but at the end of the day, it's not perfect. And listening to what feels good on your body, uh, really is the way to go. Are you an ice guy or a heat guy, Jeff? Uh, you know, I, I, I don't really have a preference actually. So I, uh, I'm a, what feels good for certain, certain injury or ailment. I know you're definitely a heat person. You wear sweaters and pants in the summer at work. So oh, yeah, no way no. I, 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 I hate the cold with a burning passion. Like something has to be like genuinely actively inflamed for me to reach, reach for that ice pack over the heat. Uh, my reputation in the clinic is like everyone will be in t-shirts and like sweating. And I wear like an infrared heat jacket under over top of my long sleeve. I'm always cold. Oh, it's cold. So definitely the way to go for me is heat. But again, you got to listen, got to listen to your body. So type in the chat who can answer this. Anyone who's been to our workshops before hopefully knows the answer. This is the number one mistake that pain sufferers make. Does anyone have a guess? It's always the same answer, guys. Spoiler alert. Um, the number one mistake that people who suffer from pain make consistently time and time again, whether well, it's pain in the hip, Pain in the knee, pain in the foot, pain in the back. Stop exercising. That's a good one. It, it is a very common one. It was not the one we we're going for, um, but it is true. People just are like, oh, I'm going to I'm gonna kind of shift what I'm doing. Uh, and that'll come up here as well. So really the number one mistake ooh, pain sufferers make is they ignore it. Yeah, Marilyn, there you go. Ignoring it, right? People are like, oh, it's fine. <laughs> Mm, just, just going to power through no pain no gain just gotta put your head down push through um and ignoring it and 
that's not the way to a solution. Just ignoring that it's there. It, it really seldom do issues get better. Um, a lot of times people come in for assessments. They're like, well, I waited a month. So I made it get better. And I was like, well, did you do anything? They're like, no, I just kind of ignored it. Unfortunately, that's not how our body works as much as I'd like it to be. Um, but Barb, here we go. Alter it. So alter it or alter our life. So we can either alter it with, you know, pain medication. We're constantly popping pills to make us feel, ourselves feel better. And we can alter what we're doing so we can stop exercising. Be like, oh, it hurts when I exercise. So I'm just not going to exercise. You know, it hurts when I stand for too long. So I'm just going to avoid social outings in which I need to stand for too long. Right? We start altering either the pain or we start altering our life instead of actually doing number three, which is handling it, right? Getting to the cause, dealing with it, doing as much as we can to not have to ignore it, not have to alter it, but just be able to live our life, you know, without having that pain constantly pestering us. So what's next? Rule number four, okay? So rule number four was take action. I said this in the beginning, I'll say this again. We really, we do these, we want you guys to feel better. We're gonna open this up to questions. Like later, we have some questions um, that were there from, uh, your guys put some questions in before, which was awesome. Um, really, we're here to help you guys. Uh, we do this because we like to have people feel better. That's why we're in this profession. Um, and at the end of the day, we want you guys to feel the best you can. So take action, either book a discovery visit. So if you want a discovery visit, so this is a free 15 minute consultation. Um, you know, type discovery in the chat um, the, or just start treatment. If you're like, hey, you know, I want to feel better. I want to get on top of this. You know, I don't want this to keep suffering from osteoarthritic changes or hip pain or knee pain. Uh, start treatment, whether it's with us or someone else. At the end of the day, we just want you guys to feel better. Um, and one of the things that we always stress is what is proper treatment? So really, these are the three pillars of what proper treatment looks like. Uh, for a lot of conditions. Education, huge. You know, so much of what we do, I never like forget when we first went to virtual and all the time people were like, oh, virtual, you know, what you guys do is hands-on. I was skeptical too. And then patients were getting better just by me guiding them through and educating them, telling them, you know, this is the best way to move, educating you on how we get muscle imbalances, educating you on poor form versus good form educating you on osteoarthritis, things to avoid, things to do, better exercises, right? Taking that GLAD program where you can get those fundamental pieces, right? So, so important. Uh, manual therapy. So this is, you know, that category where a lot of people associate it with us. It's the hands-on. The hands-on really, it does help the symptoms. You know, it can feel good at the time. Um, it can help some of the underlying causes as well. There can be some real things going on there. And that manual piece should for sure actually have some hands-on treatment. So modalities have a role, but your therapist should be putting their hands on you and giving you some, some quality treatment. And that last piece, exercise. I said it before, I'll say it again, especially with the hip and the knee. At the end of the day, the, the solution is strength. It's more often than not, eh, Jeff? Like, it's getting them to be pain-free enough to strengthen. Of course, totally. It's strength, you know, grease is the word. No, strength is the word. That's that's really what it comes down to. So your your therapy, it shouldn't just be the passive, the hands-on from the therapist. It really should have that exercise piece as well. Okay, so make sure you're getting that proper treatment. So again, I want you guys to type in the chat. So it's a free 15-minute scan. It's a virtual scan. Someone will call you. We set it up. We book it in our schedules. You'll meet with Jeff or myself. We'll you know talk to you about your issue. You know, is GLAD right for you? Does it sound like it's foreign and imbalanced? What can you do that will help you feel better? Where's the solution? You know, really any question that is personal, anything that you don't want to maybe put in the chat here, but you want an answer to, that's what those 15 minutes are for. They're your 15 minutes to ask us anything you want. Um, you know, I mean, generally try to keep it in the hip and knee region, but I mean, like if you threw out like, oh, I have this neck problem, we'd probably take that too. So whatever you want to talk about for those 15 minutes, you book it and uh, our attention is, is all yours. Um, or if you're like, you know what, I just want to start feeling better. Um, you can put in, you know, put type an assessment, say, Hey, I want to get started. I don't want a 15 minute. I want to get in. I want to get an assessment. I want to get treatment. I want to feel better tomorrow. I want to feel better as soon as possible type assessment in the chat. We're going to book that assessment for you. Um, or just a reminder, type in glad, put glad in the chat. If this is something that you're interested in more information on, um, I can't tell you like the number of patients who have had 
such a positive experience with the GLAD program. Um, it is really one of the most research backed. So like it is very impressive. Uh, and again, it really is, is uh, such a powerful piece because it's more than just those seven weeks, right? It's more than those two education and 12 exercise sessions. It's, it's giving you information, giving you tools for forever. So uh, it's, it's so valuable. So type in the chat discovery, type in the chat uh, assessment, or type in the chat, not sure. If you're like, Sarah or Jeff, I don't believe what you're selling. Um, if you have any questions, I will contact you personally. Uh, type not sure. And uh, we will definitely, definitely get back to you. Um, I'm going to leave this up so you guys can think about it. Type those in and someone from the clinic will contact you. But we're also going to open it up to the Q and A now. So if you guys have any questions, you can feel free to type those, type those in the chat. Jeff, do you see some things coming here? I'm just gonna pull up. We have all of our list of uh, the questions you guys asked before, and we're gonna field some of those as well. Oh, here I have, what are your thoughts on inversion therapy? Jeff, I feel like that's a very Cairo question. <laughs> uh, yeah, so I'm assuming unrelated to the hip and knee because inversion for those two structures is probably pretty out there. But um, uh, speaking inversion therapy regarding like spine, um, uh, uh, it's... Well, I guess if I start with the research, like it's so, so, um, there's been a little bit of like decent documentation that like inversion, which, you know, leads to like traction in a sense, like, um, depressurizing the spine. It, it can be helpful for, you know, that like disc herniation patient, like nerve compression type patient. The problem I find like clinically with a few people who have told me, you know, they've had table, they have a table or they've tried it in the past is it, it tends to be good for those kind of ailments, but it's never just that like somebody who's suffering from a disc herniation or, or nerve pressure impingement, you know, they also have muscular spasm and tension. And so if you take somebody and flip them upside down, I find that like, you know, gently, of course. Um, it's not something we do, but the tables are them by their feet, throw yeah. them upside down. But but what I find is, yeah, maybe there's some benefit for like the the intervertebral disc or the nerve pressure, but most people are gonna have like that level of tension, like you're literally like tilted, inverted on a table. Like if you can't relax, you get tense, maybe the muscle spasm gets worse. Like it's a it's a very unfocused treatment. So I almost tell people like, you know, if you're healthy, you don't have a specific ailment, then, you know, like some like gym goers will like hang from a chin up bar and like decompress their back or other people will use an inversion table. Like for somebody without a specific ailment, it, it's, it's not a bad thing to do. Like it's decent, but if I'm not so on board for the like, you have a back problem, let's get you on an inversion table for X amount of, you know, minutes per day and sort of program. I think there's some kind of like, you know, hoaxy programs out there that take advantage of people in pain. But um, yeah, I know that's a very convoluted answer, but it's- a, Especially when it comes to like purchasing it, right? Like, yeah. you know, it really, I think I agree. And I think it's one of those things where it's like approached with caution. Right. It's kind of like if somebody was like, oh, like, how do you think, uh, you know, PRP injections are? And I'd be like, well, if you get the right case with the right things, I think they're great. You know, how's cortisone? How do you think cortisone injections are? I was like, OK, again, if you got the right person with the right case. Now, if somebody fell and broke their arm and they're like, oh, we should just inject cortisone. I'd be like, no, I think they need a plate to stabilize the fractured bone. Like, it's one of those things where. I think people think A equals B and it's like back pain always equals inversion therapy being a valid treatment option. And it's just, 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 it's not that cookie cutter. <laughs> it's not that clean cut. 
And it's really knowing what's going on, having a therapist maybe look at you and they can diagnose if you got neural tension or what's going on. Or maybe like, hey, you don't got neural tension, you can relax, you're super disky, sure, let's invert you. Like, it's just one of those things where it's not an, a blanket statement. It really is a classic physio answer. It depends. Um, but it, it really, it's, it's, it's a good treatment for the right condition, but people too often think every condition is the right condition. Yeah, fair. Well said. Thank you. Uh, some other questions we have. Um, somebody said, can you put on ointments for hip pain? So I think <laughs> people talking about, you know, like got those topical creams. I know like, uh, like CBD creams are kind of big things right now in THC, uh, Voltaren. Right, there's a lot of different topical things. What do you say usually, Jack? Yeah or nay? Um, I know they're all cr it's crummy answers, but case by case basis. Like most of those, most topicals are are an anti-inflammatory. So, you know, for a person with an inflammatory based issue, they they certainly can be helpful. But uh, I know you'll say the same thing, Sarah. Like technically it's outside of our scope of practice. So, you know, beyond our personal recommendation, honestly, probably speaking to even like pharmacists, pharmacists are an underutilized, um, you know, profession who are right there. Like if you have questions about Voltaren or over the counter medication, those things, like they can speak to more of the ingredients and the quality of the product, but you know, all in all, if it's an inflammatory based issue, like a hip bursitis and it's focally tender and inflamed, like you'll probably get a bit of benefit from a topical, same as, you know, with a bit of ice or a bit of heat, it's, it's another tool in the toolbox for, for people at home to try to feel a little bit better. And so I kind of take exactly what we said about heat and ice, like trial and error. Most topicals are very safe to use, so you're not going to do any harm follow, read and follow the label and directions. <laughs> and if it helps, wonderful. Yeah, I totally agree. Again, chat with the pharmacist. Uh, the only other thing that I'll add that is, um, I'll say within our scope to a certain extent is you got to ask yourself critically, what is the structure that you're treating? So if I put a topical ointment <laughs> on the outside of my hip, I do not believe that that is in any way getting inside of my hip joint capsule. Right. Like, I think it, it comes down a little bit to talk to the pharmacist, ask yourself, like, what am I looking for this to do? And then ask yourself, you know, and, and some of this education might come, you know, from the pharmacist, from something like the GLAD program about, like, what do we know the research really says helps? Um, but like Jeff said, at the end of the day, like, they're safe as long as you run by a pharmacist and they're like, yeah, go ahead. Um, give it a try. If it works it, great. And it's not like there's a huge side effect to it not working. You might just be a little greasy on your skin for a little bit. Um, another question I have, which is again, is getting into the same thing. Um, vitamins for joint pain. <laughs> it's a big one. I don't know if, uh, this gets touched on at all in your GLAD program, but, uh, again, a nice little one outside of our scope, but what are your thoughts when people ask you about vitamins, Jeff? Um, yeah, specifically to arthritis, GLAD does cover it a bit. And it's sort of that like secondary level of the research is like pl plus or minus on supplementation. Uh, you know, there's like glucosamine, glucosamine sulfate, glucosamine chondroitin sulfate. There's, there's a mix of sort of common cartilage based, even collagen now is another newer supplement where, um, you know, most of the time there's some studies out there where there are a bit of positive results. And then there's a bunch of studies out there where there's no real statistically significant improvement. So unfortunately, again, it can help some people. It doesn't help others with more time. We'll be able to tease out why it helps people and it doesn't. Um, but similar to <laughs> the topicals, most of the time, these supplements are safe to take in short periods of time and doses. So speaking to a doctor, speaking to um, a pharmacist, you know, you can kind of identify if it'd be safe for you to take and, you know, give it the college try. And if it helps you feel better, it's either working or it's a placebo and something else is helping you in your life. But uh, um, uh, there's no real harm to try. I agree. It's one of those things where, I mean, there's naturopaths and nutritionists out there who this would be 
more within their scope. Um, <laughs> but there's there's a lot out there. And to be honest, like just conjecture here, um, everyone I talk to agrees or like some people swear by it. Like some people, my mom takes something. <laughs> I want to say that one with chondroitin in it. Uh, glucosamine chondroitin um but swears it works it's like just swears by it but then it's like there's other people who take it and it doesn't work uh it's one of those things where it's a tool in the toolkit just like the ointment just like all that other stuff um and it's, it's definitely worth uh worth looking into if you're trying to kind of take all approaches possible um so last question that i'll have here is somebody's talked about uh footwear a little bit like proper boots other footwear at home inside um, so really it's, it's looking at, again, that role that footwear might, might play. And I throw it back to that slide where we kind of showed the hip, the knee, the foot, the foot is for sure a player. Um, you know, we see a lot of people, um, who, who have knee osteoarthritis or knee issues or hip issues. Um, we do work with a great, uh, shropodist. He's absolutely amazing. Um, he will look at you and say, yes, you're a yeah, candidate for an orthotic or no, you're not. Um, and he, he really does like it, it makes an improvement. So if we're looking at things that at the end of the day are able to help you stay more active, do more things, um, footwear is a big piece for sure. Again, depends, it depends, it depends, it keeps saying that, but it depends on like what your situation is. So this is not to say that if you're in bare feet, putting shoes on in your house is going to solve your problem. Um, but for some people, it might make a difference. And it's one of, again, the tools in the toolbox, the options that are, that are available and out there for you. Um, any last questions, type them in the chat. Um, otherwise that is all the fun we have for you on this Tuesday evening. I want to thank everyone kind of coming out, typing in the chat, participating, always fun. Like I said, we're going to do the spin the wheel and we're going to contact, uh, whoever has won that free assessment. So, uh, yeah, thanks so much for, for coming out and thanks Jack for being here. My pleasure. And and those there was a, a few who wrote discovery or or glad call, et cetera. We'll uh, we copy the chat and we'll have the admin team uh, slot you into our schedule. So we'll reach out to uh, to book something. Oh, no problem, Michael. Yeah, definitely. Uh, it's not too late. Type in glad assessment discovery if you want. Any of these, we can definitely still uh, still contact you. We're not sure, still a valid option. So Jeff, what do you think? Did you officially dodge bedtime? Do you think they're they're sound asleep, your little guys? Uh, yes, I. Uh, for those of who are listening, I have two little kids at home, and they should be asleep. Should the and the keyword? And for anyone who ever wonders how we pick the time of our workshop. <laughs> We ask people, what time in your life would you like to get out of the most? And then yeah. we, we book it at that time, yeah. The, the witching hour and bedtime routine. <laughs> Take a night off. Awesome. All right. I'm going to end that there as people kind of slowly dwindle away.